I hate to use this term, but you're within the activist community, you're sort of a celebrity. Do you feel that? I also feel deeply uncomfortable with that term. It's a strange <laughs> one, you know, yeah, right? It's right? a weird one, yeah. Well, I've seen people say like, you know, celebrity, yeah. like yeah. activist celebrity, but you, you know, um, when I think of like well-known activists, I think of you, I think of James Aspie, I think of like Joey Carbstrong. Right. Right. Um, and yeah, do you, I mean, do you feel like there's been a change in your life because of that or? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it has. It's, um, I often try and reflect on, on things two and a half years ago and, and I kind of can't really work out how this happened, you know. Just the fact that I'm here traveling around the US and, and, and can take part in so many events and do so many things and meet so many amazing people is, is really, um, it's just incredible. Um, and it always, you know, the intention's always been there for just wanting to meet people and wanting to push this message as, as, as well as possible. And the reason I started my YouTube was because I felt I needed to do something. And you know, that feeling of wanting to do something has, has never diminished. It always gets you know, much fiercer and fiercer because I want to do more and more and more. And I just feel though, I'm so grateful for is that the platform I have now enables me to keep feeding into that want to do more and more and more. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's no, it, I, I love the vegan community because it's a global community of so many people and every voice is just so important in this, in this message and in, and in pursuing this and we need people from every angle pursuing and fighting this beast that is you know, animal exploitation yeah. and to, to, it's so humbling to know that there's people in, in, even in places that we don't even think veganism is occurring, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, you know, in Southeast Asia where veganism seems like almost such a, a distant idea is happening, it's happening everywhere and every voice is just so beautiful to, to, to hear it resonating across every area of the world and to be a part of that for myself is just a really um, wonderful experience and something I'll be eternally happy for but just I think it's the small things like when I go out and, and you know people stop me that's the things I've changed a lot um, and knowing that you know I get people who don't like me who see me walking around the streets and you know people, and likewise people who do like what I do see mm -hmm. me walking the streets and that's and that's the biggest difference I've seen is just knowing that that can happen. Why not walking around New York? Are you really careful yet? I, 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 yeah, I had someone come up to me in the airport yesterday oh, in wow. Charlotte, and then our um, stewardess on the plane was vegan as well. And so she, she so it, it's, it, this is the thing, it's, this is what I love about the social media, is it has a lot of flaws, but the beauty of it is it binds us together. Mm -hmm. And it means that the message can get out there so much easier. Yes. And, 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 and therefore the platforms that activists like myself or James, whoever have, means that our message gets out there a lot more, which means you know, the other side of that is who we are gets out there a lot more as mm -hmm. well. So it, London's is a real bubble for veganism because it's so dense there and so dominant there and it's really changing, but um, it's changing everywhere. It yes. really is. Yeah, yeah. What did you go to school for? Oh, I did film and TV production. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So did you, I mean, when you were, you know, before you uh, watched the, the, um, or before you read the thing about the crash of the yeah. chickens, did yeah. you ever think that like you were not going to go into film and television? Um, I never. Or yeah. do you still have aspirations to go into film and TV? Not in the way I'd love to make documentaries and films and do that kind of thing, and, and, and that's something I really hope to do. Vegan related, of course, you know, yes. which is what's different now. I mean, when I went to uni to study, I, I had dreams of being like Steven Spielberg or whatever. You know, that kind of naive 18-year-old arrogance of wanting to, you know, be a big Hollywood hotshot. You know which dissipated almost instantly, because as soon as I got there, I was like, this isn't going to work out, you know? Right. And, 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 and that's just kind of how it was, you know? I put a lot of work into it, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, yeah. and, and I realized very quickly it wasn't something I wanted to pursue as like a professional career, at least not in that traditional sense. I always wanted to make films, I, I still want to do that, I still want to, you know, I love I love the art and I love the creativity of, of, of shooting films and of, of editing and all that kind of stuff. And it's nice, I'm, I'm so happy that I get to do the things I enjoy from it, which is making videos and making little documentaries and stuff like that, without the, the nonsense of, of film work, yeah. you know. You have, there is a documentary that's out yeah. that you, um, how, you were involved in it, you you are, you are do the voiceover yes, for it. Yes, that's right. Are, were you a producer on it? Or? So the whole film was made by myself and Luna, my partner, so we made the whole thing. Oh, um, wow. So we edited it, we, we did the writing, the voiceover, everything like that. Uh, uh, some of the footage isn't shot by us, it comes from different organizations. Okay. So we worked with different organizations to, you know, to let, to let them or to ask them if we could use the footage in the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, Peter, Animal Equality, Animal Aid. What is the, ti the title of that? Oh, it's yeah. called Land of Hope and Glory. Yes, so okay. that, so, yeah, Land of Hope uh, and Glory. Which is yes. really a, an expose of UK animal farming. 
One thing we hear in the UK all the time is that, you know, we have high welfare standards and we treat animals with respect and dignity and, and we're humane. You know, that's a big thing. It's a big thing everywhere, but in the UK we really hold on to that. Um, and Luna and I knew that that's nonsense. We all know as vegans it's nonsense. And we wanted to show people that, so we set out to make this documentary that just kind of once and for all proved that, you know, standard practice, what we do to animals, is always going to be sick, is always going to be wrong and should be abolished in any form, you know. I think we, we have that here in the United States yeah. too because there is this um, sort of, there, there's this idea that we are the best and, yeah. you know, we always do think the best things the best and we um, you know we come in to save the day and so yeah. anytime people see footage they're like well that doesn't happen here in America and it's like oh uh, yeah it happens on the farm down the street right like. <laughs> and it's so funny because in the UK people point and go that only happens in America because we have this idea that everything you do well not you obviously but everything America does is is amped up and it's like commercialized and it's capitalism at its worst and therefore the, the violence is, is worse it's funny that how we have, we have these warped perceptions based on our subjective interpretations of, of culture and reality yeah. and we I think always point at others is doing the wrong thing. I think here in America, it's like, oh, that must happen somewhere in like Czechoslovakia or something, <laughs> or that must happen somewhere, right. you know, yeah, in Eastern some, Europe, Russia, probably. Right? <laughs> yeah, somewhere in Russia, that <laughs> happens. It doesn't happen here. Yeah. <laughs> probably so. But it, it's the thing, and we all know, like, it's the same everywhere. And there's different practices, and there's different, you know, procedures or whatever, or different laws. But predominantly, it's all the same. And the bottom line is, they, they all die, right? And they all get all the animals get killed in the exact same way with a knife across their throat. So that's the bottom line. And it doesn't matter what you do in between the birth, the death, the fact that they have their life taken from them or they're exploited in any way will always, always be wrong. So I think the thing about America is because the factory farming system is so much um, kind of more prevalent here. People have a, a really warped perception of, of local humane farming because because the, the worst of the worst exists here. They think, well, the opposite of that humane farming must be amazing, but um, obviously it's not. Whereas in the UK, factory farming as exists is still relatively different to here. And we have huge mega farms like you do, but factory yeah. farming is still smaller. So um, the differentiation between local organic farming and factory farming is still a lot closer than it is here, where the, where the separation is a lot larger. Yeah, well, I know, and, and in that industry, Two people who um, are at the forefront of the industry have this warped mentality of like, look at this innovation. Yeah, right. Um, and especially, you know, in developing countries who are taking after our factory farming and just starting right. to get factory farming right. in their country, this this warped mentality that it's the best way. Yeah, um, it, it, that's it, yeah, it's that kind of business centric way of thinking where it's about efficiency. Yeah. Uh, and financial dominance over. It's because we've reduced these animals to, to numbers and property and commodities and, and because they're commodities it's like trying to produce the most, you know, of any food source, you know, like bread or whatever. You want a factory system that produces the most amount of bread for the, the lowest cost and we view animals as being the same. They're a food source so we want to produce the most for the least amount of expense and, mm -hmm. and that's the issue. If we stopped seeing them as a commodity and as an individual we'd understand the barbarity of, of farming in any way but especially the notion that factory farming is some sort of efficient and you know pure system is just insanity really yeah and I, I've been asked by a few people a um, few non-vegan people you know how come you vegans want to make your food look like our food right. <laughs> and that's actually been something that I've been trying to work out like the best possible response because I've had like a few different ones yeah. but um, I don't know if you know Angelina for the animals she's yeah. like the 10 year old she's, awesome, she's right? amazing yeah. and she just gave a talk and I watched it um, and I thought her response was perfect and she simply said if we can reduce animals to products why can't we make plants into products right. simple that's easy I mean what always strikes me as, as baffling by this is is people look at like burgers and sausages and they say, why are you trying to make it look like animals? But the burgers and sausages don't look like don't animals. Don't look like animals. Why are you yeah. trying to make your food look the least like an animal possible? It's, it's, it's really weird and you know, at the end of the day, like, it's a, the shapes, you know? And we mince these animals up and we've done horrible things to them and form them to patties and shapes. That's not, they don't resemble anything like an animal. And that's, right. and that's almost the point of it, it's nothing like that. And yes, you know, we'll have, you know, breasts and stuff like that, but you don't get really get vegan products to look like that, you know? Right. It's the sausages and the burgers and the nuggets and stuff, stuff that isn't looking like an animal anyway. So it's, um, I always find that weird. I find it so frustrating because, you know, I, most of us, we didn't go vegan because we stopped enjoying the taste of these things, you know? Right. We realized that our taste wasn't worth the suffering that's involved. And um, 
So we still want to have the products that kind of have those textures and the taste because it's something we enjoy. And we should be able to enjoy those things without harming others. And that's the beauty of being vegan is we can enjoy those products without harming others. So if we can, then why on earth wouldn't we? And, um, I find that just a baffling argument because it, it once and for all proves that there is no justification for consuming animals because it's not only healthier, better for the environment, better for the animals, but you don't miss out on anything. You don't right. lose anything, give anything up. You just gain the knowledge that you're not causing that unintentional or that unnecessary suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simple yeah. really. Really? You think so, right? <laughs> I know you would. Just getting it through to people you sometimes is harder. So. Yeah. 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 When you were you were in the UK and you did the big vegan what is it? Activism ban. <laughs> Activism ban. That's the okay. one, yeah. For some reason I want to say like big Bus. gay. No. <laughs> <laughs> like the big gay ban. No, the big vegan activism activism ban. Right. Um and you did that for seven months. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and how, you know, it was just like five of you in a van? <laughs> Pretty like. much, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, so after we made the documentary Land of Hope and Glory, we wanted to, you know, we put it online and, and, and shared it that way, but we wanted to um, take it to universities because what we realized is, well, you know, there's a lot of great, you know, um, social justice leaders have done before is go to these places and talk to those demographics because students are, are open-minded, um, well, generally are more open-minded. And importantly, it's the first time in their life they have that kind of, personal autonomy where they're living for themselves and they're individuals mm -hmm. and they're buying their own food and making their own choice and we thought you know we'd looked and, and we were really inspired by the talks and, and works of other people that had gone into these educational establishments we thought let's take the documentary to universities and screen it there because those are the people we want to influence the next generation of, of yeah. thinkers and, and of, mm -hmm. um, of, of people you know so that's what we did and we were donated the van by um, a really lovely really lovely person and said you know I want to wrap this van for you um, and do your projects. So that's what we did. There's five of us in a, in a van. We travelled, you know, the length and breadth of England, from Scotland, Wales, you know, Norfolk, Cornwall, Devon, you know, everywhere we could possibly get to um, with the film. And we did on-campus outreach. So we spent the whole day on the campus of each university, and we did virtual reality um, outreach where we. You know, use these headsets to put people in the position of an animal in a farm and slaughterhouse, which is so powerful. And we had lots of conversations with students, and then we did a, a screening, and there was like a talk and a Q and afterwards, and it was just, it was a wonderful experience, exhausting, and at times um, yeah. really challenging. But the overall vibe was wonderful because what we realised is that everywhere in the UK, veganism is a thing now, and even these really big farming areas like Devon and Cornwall, these traditionally such heavy farming counties and they are still heavy farming counties but even in the middle of that in the middle of these big farming areas there's vegans and vegan restaurants and vegan cafes and vegan activism and people doing cue of truth and everything there and it was so inspiring to know that everywhere we went there's people there who, who were fighting the same fight um, that was my biggest hope from that um, and yeah it was a wonderful experience and a pleasure to be able to do that. There was one video that you posted um, where a student had come up to you and was kind of like arguing, you know, why are you telling us like, right, what to eat? Right. Was there, um, besides him, was there anyone else that kind of, any other student that kind of stood yeah. out to you, e either positive or negative? We, I mean, we had, so the positives are good to start with. We had, um, we had people crying, they'd take the headsets off, they were oh. crying, vowing to never do it again, you know, eat animal products again. Um, we had, you know, people who were really open-minded to vegan, they'd come up and like, oh, I've wanted to go vegan, tell me what it is I want to do it, give me the information. And then, you love those ones because you just pick up flies and you're like, there you go, and yeah. you just talk them through it and it's wonderful. Um, but then we had some negative ones, but 99% of them are positive. And even the negative ones, let me give you an example, this guy came up um, and he was just really argumentative, really aggressive, you know, body language. But then when you speak to them and you, and you start to go through the excuses, it, it, it's not that they're a bad person or anything, it's just that you know, they're, just, they're fearful or they're confused or they're just frustrated or there's something internal about them that makes them feel that way and it's not about you or the message, it's about them and when you actually calmly just respond to them and talk to them, you can reach this place of common ground and common understanding. I think often people that kind of react negatively are the ones who are very close to making that change but they, they, their egos are kind of holding them back and making them lash out because they don't want to but they, they know deep down that they should and they mm -hmm. just don't want to accept that so um, even the negative conversations a lot of them would turn out positive in the end because um, I mean like that one that I spoke to like it, it, it didn't end with him saying he's going to go vegan or anything like that but it ended quite well considering the, the aggressive start to, the, to yeah. the conversation and he was very aggressive 
but over time you, you just realise oh, I'm not got an argument to stand on so you start to start to feel a bit foolish because you're acting all like you're having a tantrum but without any reason to. Um, so yeah, 99% uh, of the, the conversations were positive to begin with but even the ones that start off negative ended mostly well I think. And you also talked to, um, you've done some of the outreach with farmers themselves. Ah, right, yeah. Uh, I think those are the ones that probably give me <laughs> the most, like, <laughs> yes. Do you ever, have you ever, like, feared for your safety when you're talking to a farmer? Who, like, that's their livelihood. Mm. Not, not, not in those moments. Um, I mean, I get messages from farmers, threats um, from farmers. Um, but I've never been in a situation, I mean, I just, well, I had a farmer come around, he wanted to hit, like, I was talking, talking to him through his car window and he, I said something to him that upset him. Not, nothing rude, I think, we were just chatting about it, he was laughing at us and I was like saying, why are you laughing and stuff. Anyway, he got really angry and he, he bawled out of his car to come hit me. Um, and, and thankfully, well, thankfully for me, but a couple of the other activists who I was there were stepped in the way and, and they took the brunt of his, his aggression. I, I just got shoved, but a couple of the others got a bit more hurt. So, I was lucky, they, they weren't so lucky, but, um, yes, yeah, so it, you know, there is always, I guess, that danger, but for the most part, again, it's just when you have a conversation, it's how you act in that conversation, and, and, um, and it would, you know, I could have probably acted differently to make him not feel so aggressive, but for the most part, no, I don't, I don't think so, because we have to empathise with everyone, and I don't think that just because someone's a farmer, they're necessarily a bad person. You know, they, you right. can do bad things and not be a bad person, and, and for farmers who are raised in generation to generation, believing it's normal and natural for them to farm, it's hard then to just hold them completely accountable for the actions that they make because like us, they were indoctrinated in the system. It's just their indoctrination is in the farming system rather than just in the consumer system. Right. Um, so I think even when we speak to people like that who directly do the mutilations or indeed even the killings in the slaughterhouse, we should still empathize with their situation, understand why it is they do this. And when we do that, it, it generates a conversation where that kind of threat I think is, is diminished somewhat. Not always gonna be gone, but diminished somewhat. And so no, I enjoy those conversations because uh, I think it, it, I think it just shows people that everyone deep down has those same feelings of wanting to not harm animals or, or believe that animal cruelty is wrong. It's just for some reason we have these degrees of separation in place where people can do actual cruelty to animals and still not take accountability for it. But it shows people that actually deep down we do connect on, on, on similar points. We just need to help everyone realise the hypocrisy of saying these things but acting differently. Mm -hmm. um, so now apart from, I get, as I say, messages and stuff, but again, words, you know. But like idle, idle threats. It's idle threats, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for coming and doing this. We know that you have uh, so many other places to go and pleasure. people to see and people to talk to, so we really appreciate you taking the time. Guys, please go to YouTube and uh, type in Earthling Ed and subscribe to his channel, like, right now. Do that, do that right this second. <laughs> um, and watch his videos, watch his outreach. Um, uh, learn about veganism, learn how to become a better uh, activist, uh, learn how to not get stumped when I mean, people ask you some of the most insane things yeah, possible. Right, right, right. Um, follow on uh, Instagram and Twitter and make sure to subscribe below and we will catch you on the next episode. See you next time.